Okay, hi guys, are we live? Is everything fine? I mean, the camera, can you hear me? So, um, today we're going to go through some uh, modeling of a bathroom. I hope that you all got your notes uh, ready because uh, we're going to cover many interesting topics, uh, how to model some of the furniture. Also, I'm going to uh, show you how you can do some detail on models that are um, well, let's say more complex. Most of the models in this scene uh, will be quite easy to 
uh, understand. Okay, video is choppy. You know what? Uh, I'll be right back. So stay tuned. It's just an error with our system. One minute. Okay, we've got it restarted. No, I still see it's choppy. Uh, one minute, guys. It's not going to take long. Um, just a sec. Okay, so we're back and it seems that our camera is still choppy. I guess uh, you're going to have to um, see me f uh, do the framework. Uh, I don't know how to uh, wait a sec. Uh, just a... Just... Okay guys, I guess this time I'm unable to deal with this technicality. So I'm just going to skip to the, our schedule because, you know, uh, this is not the greatest uh, um, not the greatest situation for us, but we're still going to manage this. Uh, okay, so right now, um, today we're going to go through the bathroom rendering and as I told you, uh, we're going to try and uh, recreate this image that uh, you already seen on Facebook. So I hope that you're going to enjoy this uh, s short stream. Uh, we're going to try and uh, do it as fast as we can um, because, you know, uh, we uh, value your time. We don't want to waste it. Uh, we're going to show you some neat tricks that we, you can use uh, when modeling any kind of interior. Uh, this is going to be rendered straight, uh, done straight from um, from you know uh, reference. So uh, we're going to use uh, also our um, floor plane. So um, uh, I hope that you'll uh, enjoy this. So let's get started and move to 3ds Max right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you, most of you. Um, probably know us because uh, you'll already hear uh, thanks to our Facebook or Instagram accounts and um, you know um, we only post on our Instagram the uh, works done by our students so you should definitely visit us so it's Viz Academy uh, lower lowercase uh, slash and then uh, you, you add UK so um, visit us there and you can follow us uh, we post almost daily 
uh, with a lot of um, well interesting images okay as I as I told you we're going to recreate uh, this image here so we're going to uh, import this uh, this file uh, again wait a sec okay uh, wait a sec again a small technicality wait a sec <laughs> yeah so uh, this is not going the greatest in the start but we're now back on track uh, so okay uh, again this is the image we're aiming for and we're going to actually recreate it so jumping back to 3ds max this is the final scene we're aiming for um, okay let's get started if you don't have the floor plan uh, don't worry we're going to uh, provide it in the end of the, this stream when I know that it's not really possible for you to um, do the same uh, as I am doing at this moment because you know this is a stream so I don't expect you to follow each step right now but you're still going to be able to recreate it on your own so I'm going to add this as my reference so uh, I'm going to move this as a viewport background instead of uh, an env environment map so what you need to do uh, at this point is um, when you have image like that you need to know the pixel ratio so you just need to inspect it like I did right now and you need to type it in uh, in your re render setup uh, in the common um, tab so I'm just going to copy those uh, inform those informations that I just shown you okay and tell me uh, can you hear me now is everything fine at this moment okay again six oh okay so this is our uh, image that we're go going to aim for you can at this moment you can add a camera into your scene and um, it has to be a free camera or you can use corona camera for that and also you will need to uh, disable the target for it so let's just try and move to uh, top view all right so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to put it right like like so okay so now what I'm going to do is um, I've opened this camera so you need to click here and select the camera we're working at so th this is the one we're going to stick to and now we don't need this uh, um, floor plan at this moment so this is the perspective match technique so we're just going to quickly align those lines to better match this image actually um, it has a pretty default uh, settings at this moment so uh, it's not it's going to be redundant to do it uh, with this image but this is the base technique that you should approach this uh, type of work so let's just move to uh, actually uh, modeling something out so here you can see I've got this uh, primitive floor plan let's say that your client didn't really have any kind of uh, materials to give give you uh, we can also do it on image but at this moment uh, to save a little bit of time I decided to work with a, a vector file okay so you can there's a lot of techniques to approach it and I'm going to do it in the fastest way so go to creation tab uh, select uh, splines and start modeling from one of the corners that you're interested in remember to actually uh, put a vertex uh, on each door uh, way so you can um, quickly add the detail uh, later it's going to be basic shape that we're just going to outline uh, using extrude in a minute so as you can see this is 
Uh, this can be done in just a few seconds. So I'm going to use extrude to make this object appear. Okay, so now I'm going to move to our view so I can actually see how tall I should uh, make this wall. Okay, so this should be about it. Okay, so we need to do the details for the doors and also uh, so some of the ceilings. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert our object to editable poly by right clicking, convert to editable poly. And again, uh, I'm going to move a little bit uh, to um, our edge uh, creation panel. Uh, I mean, uh, sub-object level. And now, um, again, I'm moving to our view uh, and, and I'm going to select this, our main camera now. And I'm just going to quickly uh, move this line here. So remember that you should focus on this line that you have in front of you. So you can actually see uh, the, the details you're adding. And one thing that uh, you should remember is that when creating such models, you should always uh, try and uh, have your, let's say, zero point uh, fixed. Uh, so uh, just add the zero. Uh, so when you add in some objects, it's going to be easier for you to actually use that. So I'm just going to make sure that my object is starting from zero. So actually, uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you a nice trick. Uh, I'm going to move it to uh, minus one, and then I'm going to uh, create this uh, box uh, that will work as our floor. So this way, uh, when I add a floor generator or any uh, floor object, I'm going to keep, keep it uh, just uh, a one centimeter uh, thick. So when you're using that kind of um, uh, techniques like floor generator uh, or whatnot, it's going to always put your uh, objects in, in the zero. So it's going to save you a lot of time. And also it's going to keep your uh, scene tidy because uh, when working with SketchUp, um, I often had this problem where uh, people just put in objects, let's say uh, three meters above your uh, scene. Um, so um, are you, uh, uh, am I going to view this object in wireframe? Sure, I can uh, do it here. So uh, tell me, can you hear me well? Um, basically, where are you from, guys? Because uh, we've got a, a quite a lot of crowd here. Um, tell me, uh, where are you from? Um, are you students, architects, um, 3D enthusiasts? Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to just uh, click here a little bit so uh, you're, you won't get bored too much. Okay, so. Uh, right now I'm creating this door holes, uh, <laughs> doorways. So we're going to basically keep our model as clean as possible. So we don't have any problems with rendering. Remember when working with Corona renderer and also V-Ray or other engines, what you're going to notice is that uh, when working with, uh, let's say, shell type of objects uh, that are not uh, one dimension um, flat planes like this one so it doesn't have any thickness uh, when you're working with object that, objects that don't have any thickness you're probably going to experience uh, some rendering bugs like you know uh, light bleeding or uh, some other small and smaller and bigger problems uh, so okay um, Moving back to our camera now. This is the moment where our floor plan is going to actually be, actually be helpful. So I'm just going to um, unhide some of those objects. Okay, this is 
this is not going as I presumed. Okay, so uh, we've got our floor plan and we're going to uh, go ahead and model this cabinet. Um, so uh, any of you have any experience with 3ds Max uh, already? So, oh, a UK student, uh, great, Lithuania. Oh, hi guys, uh, it's nice to see you. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to render uh, I mean, model this uh, cabinet here. So take a good look at it. Uh, we're going to use some basic techniques. Uh, from what I can see, it's going to uh, be quite fast for us because, you know, at this moment, we can uh, have this approach using rectangles. So since I've got this, um, um, this element here, uh, highlighted. I'm just going to recreate it using rectangle. So I'm going to extrude it and give it a little bit uh, of height. So uh, basically adding uh, some design student, no experience in using 3ds Max, Spain for, and living in the UK. Great. Oh, we, we, we really have some uh, crowd tonight. Great. Uh, so Okay, moving on to modeling. Uh, when you're um, selecting objects uh, like edges, you can use connect to actually uh, create extra lines. And now, since this is a 3D visualization and not a final project, we're going to use chamfer and we're just going to eyeball this element here because we're not going to actually focus on each centimeter because still we're working with uh, images, not with pro um, projects like, um, let's say, nobody's going to build anything out of it. So remember, first of all, you need to sell your project, uh, your design. So this is the most important to uh, be as accurate as possible. But at the same time, don't go crazy about it because uh, you may waste a lot of time that is very precious and we don't really need to um, focus on some of the stuff that is not going to be used in any kind, uh, in any way. So, okay, so um, uh, 2D design. Um, well, sorry for you, but uh, now you can learn 3D with us. So. Uh, try and uh, visit our website and see for yourself how easy it is to actually learn 3ds Max. So maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Uh, I've got more than 10 years of experience in 3ds Max. I'm a, uh, I'm a student, uh, no, I'm a, not a student, I'm a professional right now. So uh, what I meant is that I'm self-taught and at this moment uh, I'm going to share my knowledge with you because uh, I figured that it's going to be uh, easiest for me to actually uh, show people how it's done uh, thanks to uh, my skills and the knowledge I've got from the years of my experience. Um, you know what? This camera is really annoying me. Uh, let's take a break, just a two minutes break. I'm going to try and reset this camera because uh, I don't feel good when I'm uh, framing like that. Just one sec.
Okay, this is okay. I see that sh that I'm working fine. So okay, uh, no framing now. So okay, uh, let's move on with the stream. So as I was saying, we're going to model. Uh, we're going to model this uh, bathroom again. Uh, okay, uh, now let's just uh, focus on modeling now, and uh, no more interruptions. Okay, so. As you can see, um, this is a nice tool when aligning camera, uh, doing a perspective match. Uh, not many people know it. Uh, some beginners uh, don't learn it uh, for a few, uh, for a long time. When you go to here, there's a small plus. You need to click it, and you can select. 2D pan zoom mode. So when you select it, you're not going to move your camera, but you're still able to zoom in and zoom out in your uh, field of view. So it's going to be extremely uh, helpful while modeling uh, stuff like this, because right now we can simply uh, go ahead and move uh, into these uh, these details. And um, I'm going to quickly align these elements so so they fit a little bit better. Okay, so let's just move it a little bit. Okay, I guess this is uh, enough. By pressing uh, by pressing S, I turn on the snap tool. I recommend you to set it to vertex and midpoint, and remember to have your enable axis constraint on. Uh, this is going to be extremely helpful because when aligning objects like like I am now, you can select uh, midpoint or vertex. So you know. It's going to allow you to grab uh, objects uh, like this, and you know it's going to speed up your work. So it's a handy, th uh, handy thing. Okay, now I'm going to keep on modeling this uh, cabinet. This is going to be a spline modeling. So uh, we're going to hide those elements that we don't need at this moment. Okay, um, still modeling this cabinet. <laughs> okay. Um, guys, uh, wow, the cam speed is great. Thank you, uh, thank you. So that's that's great. Uh, that's that's what I was aiming aiming for. Okay, so um, as I was saying, uh, I got more than ten years of experience in 3ds Max. I worked in uh, various companies uh, doing visuals and whatnot. Um, you know. With this type of experience, uh, when dealing with uh, any kind of 3D, uh, you can be pretty certain that you're able to uh, actually f d finish and deliver any uh, kind of project in, in well, um, <laughs> in the project uh, time frame. So uh, I'm going to actually show you uh, another neat tri trick that we're going to use here for modeling. I'm just going to quickly uh, create those lines uh, then we're going to move them a little bit lower so uh, we don't waste time for our um, for overall modeling this uh, cabinet because you know um, time is valuable and we don't want to waste it f uh, uh, waste any of it okay now I'm going to attach this here okay there there's some extra shape in here okay so um, guys uh, again uh, who's a student here this is this stream is actually aimed at students and uh, beginners to show you uh, how you can quickly model any type of uh, ele um, any type of interior uh, how you can uh, actually approach uh, any kind of design, uh, how you can uh, accomplish uh, your projects uh, in the uh, smallest time frame. Um, so, you know, we cover a lot of topics. Uh, most of them are, uh, of course, 3D related, but uh, we also uh, tell you how to actually uh, cr create your own portfolio, what people uh, like, how to talk to your clients and also uh, how to approach uh, new uh, design because uh, that's one of the problems that people may have uh, when dealing with a new kind of environment especially when starting with 3d so 
uh, we're going to uh, basically teach you everything that it, there is uh, about 3D. Uh, now I'm going to fix my uh, top of this object just to uh, quickly uh, use uh, 2 by 2 F FFD and to fix uh, the size of this uh, object and okay since uh, this is done we still we still need some uh, elements here so I'm going to detach this uh, to uh, create those extra um, extra spaces uh, to put uh, your towels in I'm going I'm actually going to move to copy and yeah uh, I was expecting that so I prepared this <laughs> this Uh, so, okay, uh, we've got a critical error, so you need to be prepared for this kind of situations because uh, 3ds Max is a uh, hell of a buggy um, software and it's going to crash a lot. So I hope that you know how to use autosave. This is uh, one of the first lessons we actually cover. Uh, 3ds Max likes to crash and it does it a lot and there's no helping uh, to it the, you cannot stop it from doing it and um, um, actually it's going to be really really annoying at times when working uh, let's say on a stream with a bunch of people uh, watching you um, I guess it's going to be extremely annoying when trying to uh, create something that is uh, let's say valuable uh, fortunately, I've got my scene saved and I can move back to the progress uh, we had. So just uh, give me a sec, I'm going to copy this, this object. So we haven't lost this cabinet, uh, but autosave didn't uh, really uh, launch for that element. Okay, and I guess we can say that we're back, so I'm going to share the screen right now. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, this, this crash was really annoying. Mm. So give me the feed feedback. Can you see the screen? I just had some, just a little bit of uh, freeze there. Uh, tell me um, again. Um, are you able to follow? Um, I'm going to open the scene of this faucet to uh, focus on it for a while, uh, for a sec because uh, there's some trickery in here. Uh, actually, uh, modeling it and when modeling it, um, I use the most basic tools that you can. Um, this is uh, just an element made of line, and those are cylinders uh, cut using slice. So. Oh uh, yeah, you can see my screen. That's great. Um, oh, you specialize in Maya. Didn't touch 3ds Max. Very curious. Okay, so um, right now 3ds Max is the industry standard standard for uh, 3D visualizations. So if you're interested in this topic, I would uh, definitely uh, recommend using 3ds Max because it has the best rendering engines uh, on the market uh, at this moment and when not working with animation uh, even though 3ds Max is really great uh, when do doing it um, fuse and weld so uh, this is basically how you approach this uh, this element you just create a line and then you can use palette to quickly um, create this. Um, I've uh, made it uh, two centimeters, uh, the radius two, uh, into two centimeters. I'm going to quickly align it so you can see that it's basically the same. Uh, after that, uh, you can just go ahead and um, create a cylinder starting from this base point. Uh, put it anywhere and then just type in the radius you're interested in. Um, here, th this is uh, very important to remember how many um, sides you actually need for your object. Basically, you can ignore that, but try to keep uh, this number uh, lower because we're going to use Turbo Smooth on it. 
So right now, as you can see, those are basically just cylinders. So we're just going to um, keep clicking those. And right now, uh, the only element that is actually worth mentioning at this point is how you can approach this kind of elements. So uh, I prepared, uh, I didn't finish this model because I was hoping uh, I will actually do it online and recreating it from scratch will be a better lesson for you because you know uh, working only on uh, already made models is going to be annoying uh, and you know we don't want you to uh, get into our stream and see that you know uh, how to draw draw uh, uh, an all uh, draw a circle and then the rest so no it's not going to be like that um, when uh, trying to uh, slice objects in um, by 45 degrees, uh, we're going to use uh, the proper tool for it. It's going to be slice plane. We're going to move it right here and to avoid any damage to our uh, elements, we're going to um, select only those parts that we want to slice. So you don't accidentally slice some, let's say, um, elements that are inside of your object. Um, quickly going to slice plane, split, slice. Now we should have this line and we already do. So again, uh, using slice plane, we're going to move it a little bit lower. Okay, all right, like so. Uh, I need to reset this. Okay, so moving this slice plane will allow you to, uh, using snap tool while moving sna uh, your slice plane is will allow you for uh, the best accuracy, which I definitely missed. Uh, so again, um, I'm going to move it here, rotate by 45 degrees, uh, 90 degrees, okay. It didn't work out again, but we can just do it anyway, um, slice. Okay, the, all those crashes were amazing start for our uh, stream right now. So, um, did you download it? Uh, you mean the ta uh, No, no, I modeled it. Okay, so we've got this uh, those parts here. We need to get rid of those that we don't need. So, just quickly um, deselect those. Now we're going to uh, weld those in uh, Z axis. So first I'm going to flatten this like so. And now I can weld it. So uh, go a little bit crazy at this point with the welding because uh, we're going to try and weld it as uh, best as we can. So now uh, what is actually uh, helpful here is when using smoothing groups, you can quickly add your smoothing group here. Again, one smoothing group here. And the third one uh, is going to land here. Uh, don't worry about this element here. And now when using chamfer and uh, turbo smooth, we're going to be able to uh, create some details. And okay, now it's as you can see, it works terrible, terrible, terribly bad. So I'm going to decrease this a little bit and we're going to only uh, use it on smoothed edges. So right now you don't have to care for the border protection because uh, 3ds Max is doing it for you. You actually, uh, you can also um, turbo smooth this model at this point. But since uh, we want this uh, element to uh, not create this um, artifact, we're going to fix uh, those smoothing groups again. Auto smooth and and auto smooth. Clear. Five. Okay, now it should create a line and it didn't again because the angle was on. Okay, so now when uh, you have this model protected, uh, you don't have to care any longer about your um, uh, topology at this point because you've already done your job and um, this element was created do, uh, using the same technique uh, but using slice on the, uh, on 35 um, degrees uh, also this is a cylinder so uh, this is um, 
one of the models we're going to share, share with you. Actually, we're able to share uh, this whole scene with you or if you're interested in. Uh, we're going to create a series of streams for you and where we're going to go through all this uh, modeling uh, from start to finish. Uh, are you going to make some tutorials on YouTube? Uh, would like to watch it? Yes, we are actually going to uh, put um, our tutorials online uh, in just few uh, days. So we're trying to work on our base. First, we want to uh, add uh, a little bit of spice uh, doing those streams. So um, when working with scenes like this, you're going to also need to be able to create tiles. And remember when I told you about this floor um, neat uh, trick that I'm going to show you? So, okay, um, when we have this object and we have it set to minus one, now I'm going to add a floor generator. Uh, floor genera generator is uh, a plugin that you may download from CG Source. Um, it's going to uh, allow you to, um, well, basically create uh, models uh, like this in just a second. I mean, a floor tiling and whatnot. Um, at this point, I'm going to change the direction of this. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to find it. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's de decrease this offset. And also, we don't need any gaps. So that, that's that's not really important for us. Also, we don't need any beveling because uh, it's not important. And what is the best about this technique is that now we created floor, uh, which is actually on a zero. When creating new objects, they are going to appear on your floor. So you don't have to aim that three centimeters, 15 and whatever. Uh, always use this technique. Uh, this is going to be the most um, uh, efficient uh, workflow for you. When working with uh, floor generator, you're going to have to actually uh, keep in mind that this is not uh, this is not a perfect software. Uh, it's going to also make your 3ds Max crash if you go a little bit too crazy with the numbers. So uh, remember to uh, try and uh, save your scene as uh, uh, as just. Uh, reminder of that crash we had. So I'm going to uh, name it now. Okay, so just to remember it. Okay, so um, as you can see here, we've got we've got this um, black doorway and uh, to quickly create it, um, to recreate it, I'm going to detach this element, the SS clone, uh, and I'm going to name it um, door element. Um, adding shell modifier to it will allow us to add some thickness to it, also straightening cor corners. And again, uh, we're going to quickly uh, select this uh, elements of this um, mm, of our walls to add our um, mm, how to say it um, floor generator to actually tile our um, walls. We're going only to cover those walls that we can see because um, it's not really important for us to uh, add any kind of detail to things that you can see. Uh, usually when working with three visualizations, you need to be as fast as you can. So uh, maybe doing step by step a tutorial like I am is not going to show you the fastest ways uh, at this moment, but believe me, uh, there are many techniques uh, that are slower and we're going to show you those that are most efficient. So uh, s uh, please stay uh, tuned and be patient because at this moment I'm just adding a, a few details that will allow us to create those uh, openings in a wall. What is very um, interesting about uh, our plugin here is that it allows you to actually use it on any kind of um, uh, any kind of um, surface as long as it's um, flat. So when creating uh, your walls like I am now, remember to add this detail. Okay, I'm going to make it let's say 12 centimeters. Yeah, I'm acting like I didn't do it before, right? Uh, so 
Um, I, I actually know those numbers. So um, I'm going to add two more connections to fix the height. And now I'm just going to move this here. And we don't need this element. So uh, why did I create those um, details before I added the floor generator to uh, our scene actually? Well, it's because um, we're going to quickly select all this wall without those three holes. And I'm going to diesel detach this uh, part to um, as a copy. So I'm going to add and paste the floor generator again. So now we've got uh, all our walls covered as I uh, planned with almost the same settings. So as you can see, uh, this works really fine. So we've got those and we've got our um, floor. And now I'm going to add uh, a little bit of environment and I'm going to show you what we're actually dealing with. Um, so a little bit of environment, Corona Sky. Let's add the material override because uh, you know you should actually uh, use it at the uh, first stages of your modeling. Okay, and now we're going to quickly um, create a material for our tiles. So uh, what I like to use is uh, Corona Material and Corona Multimap. Those are uh, really helpful when working with any kind of tiling or um, I don't know floors uh, that are made from wood. I don't know planks are really good when using Corona uh, multimap or uh, multimap uh, from CG source. Um, anyway, I'm going to batch load the textures. Um, I've got a few prepared earlier. So as you can see, uh, this um, element um, map works uh, as a randomizer for your maps and uh, it allows you to add a, um, any kind of map in random with random rotation and whatnot to your scene. So uh, when you're working with this kind of elements, uh, you may quickly add uh, those details that you're interested in and you don't have to focus on rotating each, each um, a UV map uh, for your uh, object. At this moment, it uh, doesn't look very promising. Uh, I mean, um, um, <laughs> no, it actually looks promising, but it doesn't look uh, very uh, interesting because we still still need a lot of details in our scene. Uh, we're also going to uh, get a little bit more impressive effects when we're going to use tone mapping. Uh, but right now uh, we're going to uh, focus a little bit on uh, actually adding the detail to our scene. So I hope that you don't mind that I'm going to copy some of those elements uh, that are um, already made like, you know, uh, this uh, two objects here because, well, um, you probably know the latch technique where you use line to outline any kind of shape. So uh, how different uh, would you say it's to Redshift? Well, uh, compared to Redshift, uh, I don't really um, have many information ab uh, about this uh, rendering engine. So uh, what I would say is that um, isn't Red, uh, Redshift um, um, GPU? Uh, so that, that would be one of the biggest uh, um, differences. Also, Corona uh, has amazing, um, uh, amazing support, which uh, actually r is really helpful. So this is the basic uh, base of the latch technique. You already know it. Uh, even if you're not, uh, if you're, if you're a beginner, this is a, this is the first tutorial you're ever going to uh, touch. So uh, we're just going to open it and copy those objects quickly. Uh, also, this is a cylinder, this is a sphere, and this is a pedestal made of box. So this is not going to actually take long to copy those. Um, 
Well, in my opinion, uh, Corona is the best rendering engine uh, on the market, mostly because it's very affordable. It's going to be very helpful or f helpful for most of the students. Uh, when working with Corona, uh, remember to actually uh, use scene material. Um, Okay, so uh, when working in Corona, it's, you have the shortest learning curve, you're going to be able to work with it. Um, well, just, if not uh, weeks, uh, if not days, it's going to be weeks. And I, I believe that uh, when you first open Corona and you have just a basic knowledge of it, you're going to be able to um, create any kind of uh, environment you're uh, interested in. So uh, try to actually uh, use your uh, imagination when working with Corona to get your best results. Uh, it, uh, when working with Corona, you can focus uh, mostly on your um, creative design. I, and what I mean by that, you don't have to remember all the numbers, all uh, settings. It's going to be just uh, put in put in the light set the uh, color and tone mood that you like and just render it's going to be that easy so um, I strongly really strongly recommend you use your uh, corona renderer uh, it's uh, available to download from their site they have a really good um, uh, trial where you can use it for approximately 50 or 40 days I, I don't remember uh, so it's really um, really going to be that helpful, especially when you're a student and you're just uh, trying to, you know, uh, check for uh, best options on the market and you don't want to waste a lot of money. And that that brings me to our uh, school where we actually teach you how to use every uh, possible element of 3ds Max. Uh, where um, you can basically be sure that in just a few weeks you'll be able to create any kind of interior and exterior um, um, rendering as long as you just put in a little bit of effort, effort we're not going to do it for you because we only support you and what is uh, the best in it we uh, split our um, class into let's say three mine elements we focus mostly on um, the support that we give you and it's 24 hours for our students uh, seven days a week Tw uh, 24 hours. Um, that's the re that's our real advantage over any guy, uh, any other competitors. Uh, we um, um, g we support. Uh, we give you uh, our training videos. Um, a lot of instruction uh, manuals. How to um, you'll just know the how uh, the you'll have the know how. Sorry for this uh, blubbling, but um, this. Uh, this earlier earlier um, mm, crashes just uh, you know uh, can uh, get your genius rusted. Anyway, um, so definitely um, tell me, guys, are you still following? I mean, um, if you're basically uh, starting your journey with 3ds Max, uh, tell me what. What really made you uh, use 3ds Max? What was the uh, reason? Who told you about this program? Um, for me, it was uh, my friend uh, who showed me that uh, some guys in our neighborhood are uh, doing no good and um, in 3ds Max. So I basically um, tried this program using the uh, student's license. Uh, you know, it allowed me to uh, open a, a 3ds Max uh, on my own computer um, and I was able to learn a lot uh, because, uh, you know, it uh, it's ever expiring. Um, so you can quickly uh, learn and, uh, you know, at the moment I started, you, you didn't have many options to actually learn 3ds Max because the, there were no tutorials like uh, today and uh, there were no schools and nobody was able to uh, give you the proper knowledge on a level that allowed you to uh, work in the field in just, what, let's say, a few weeks or days. 
Um, we're going to, our class is, uh, um, well, specially designed for uh, architectures, our architecture students and also, um, well, um, graphic designers wannabe. Uh, when you uh, would like to focus on 3D visualizations and you want to deliver those uh, photorealistic um, images, uh, this is the best way to go. Uh, I mean, our school is uh, just that cool. Uh, so you should probably check out our uh, mind page is to um, to see for yourself and also uh, when you're going to use 3ds max re remember that it often crashes often crashes and uh, you should have your uh, 3ds max always uh, secured so uh, what is uh, actually um, interesting in this type of uh, models when just using uh, let's say uh, simple circles uh, you can quickly add uh, some without add, adding uh, details you can quickly uh, select turbo smooth and go to smoothing groups so you don't have to add any extra pr protecting borders so you don't destroy your uh, let's say base uh, mesh when working uh, with any kind of objects okay um, now I'm going to model this uh, this element here okay so a quick inspection on our bathtub it's uh, basically uh, made out of rectangle um, so it, it this is how it started you can also start using um, any kind of tool you like uh, like sphere and uh, you can cut it in half scale it a little bit and when you do you're able to actually have almost the same effect uh, in just a few seconds. Uh, then after you're, uh, you're done, you can simply uh, use two by two uh, FFD to stretch out or uh, model further your um, bathtub. So I'm going to scale it right now. Split it uh, from both sides. And as you can see, it's uh, actually pretty straightforward technique that you can use on your own in any, uh, well, any moment. So uh, the only uh, tricky, part, uh, tr tricky part here is going to be uh, adding the bridge here. So uh, you should probably focus on this part because uh, when using bridge, you're going to be able to add those extra segments. Those are really helpful, especially when you want to go fancy with your design. You can uh, work with all those uh, extra numbers here to add some curvature. But we're not going to actually add any twist to it at this point because we just need this bridge and this is what we came for. So um, right now I'm going to flatten the bottom of it uh, to fix it a little bit and uh, use a shell modifier to add the thickness. Always uh, remember that um, paper thin models that don't have uh, two sides, uh, th those models that are one-sided are going to um, work really differently in your rendering engines. Some of the engines actually ignore that, but um, Corona Renderer is a little bit sensitive to that. And and you can actually um, get uh, some unpredicted results uh, when working with this kind of uh, uh, interior design. Oh, uh, Antonia, uh, tell me what school you go to, which year on you're on. Okay, so basically uh, now when you have your bathtub ready, all you need to do is protect those borders and to do it uh, here, I didn't use chamfer because uh, I thought that it's going to be a little bit easier. So all you need to do is add chamfer. I've used five millimeters and you know, when you have it, you're going to be able to turbo smooth it. Okay, so Moving on to a trick that I actually really like is um, you see this win windows um, when preparing your windows, you, you may uh, want to 
well, let's say, use some presets. And uh, when working with, uh, when you create your own presets, you are able to uh, use any kind of windows uh, for any kind of shapes or forms. Um, even uh, let's say triangular. So I'm going to show you quickly how to approach it that way. Uh, so it's going to save you tons and tons of time uh, when working in 3ds Max. So, okay, let's just focus on this now. I'm going to move to clay. Okay, so basically what I used is swept modifier and I quickly created this rectangle so I'm going to recreate it right now, or I'm just going to add a circle on and a line. Okay, that, that, that line didn't go well. Yeah, thank you. That's why it didn't go well. So uh, I'll be right back to the S Max is just killing me tonight. Um, all right, so be right back. So we've got a little bit time for more questions from you guys. Um, you know what, I'm just going to move to my main scene because uh, recreating uh, the progress we've made and opening the scene will uh, actually result in um, just uh, a little bit of uh, your time wasted. So yeah, I'm going to move to the final uh, scene where um, I've got this floor um, already set up uh, all the floor objects and what what not okay so we've got it back so i opened the mine scene uh, we're aiming for this image so basically i'm going to quickly uh, show you some of those uh, parts that are important um, quick material uh, um, inspection so basically those are this is all the materials i used so it's not that complicated and there's not a lot of them some of them aren't really used like this one and this one so again um, if you want to create a backdrop of some kind of image uh, in your background like i did all you need to do is actually find your um, image or hdri and add it to, to a plane and put it behind your window so uh, we did it here it's uh, it's really simple uh, uh, the way we did we did it it's really simple and as you can see here uh, it's when working in 3ds max you're going to have your uh, background when using uh, let's say uh, self-illumination um, when using self illumination you're going to expect uh, experience that um, your uh, background is going to be uh, put in the rest uh, category in 3ds max uh, frame buffer i mean uh, corona uh, frame buffer uh, so um, remember that this is where you uh, may uh, change those settings okay i'm going to turn off everything and uh, let it render a little bit. So basically, because uh, our 3ds Max uh, made a little bit of crashes, I wasn't uh, really able to tell you uh, the most spicy parts uh, because um, setting up the light for this kind of a scene is basically the most important. So uh, what I'm going to show you is how I approach those materials and how I approach those lights. Um, in our final rendering. So mm, this is, uh, let's say, our basic uh, setup. I'm going to show you quickly. Uh, there's a neat trick here because uh, when working with Corona uh, and also other rendering engines, when selecting any kind of light and making it a little bit bigger than usual, uh, you're going to make your uh, shadows a little bit more soft, uh, softer. So uh, when the light source is really small, uh, like let's say like this, it's going to create uh, mostly uh, those, uh, let's say uh, hard um, shadows that you can see from, uh, let's say regular old light bulbs or your flashlight. And um, when you create those, uh, 
uh, lights a little bit bigger with radius set to uh, let's say four and above uh, with some uh, strong um, um, uh, with a lot of lumens um, it's, go it's going to work a little bit uh, better so uh, this is the LED setting for the pedestal uh, also this is the LED setting for the ceiling uh, it's not really that complicated uh, how I done those LEDs it's uh, basically two rectangles uh, using rendering uh, enabled in uh, viewport in rend rendering and also uh, setting up the size to fit your needs and um, I'm going to quickly reset some of the settings uh, I already have in the, those lights so uh, it's going to be um, a little bit better for you uh, to understand uh, all the uh, setup and um, also, this balcony element was made using floor generator and it was just used in the, in the most basic way you can. I added a multimap, added only one color and randomized the, the gamma. So it's going to actually work the best. Okay, so since uh, I have worked on this light bulb uh, for uh, let's say a few minutes, I'm going to also show you one thing. when. Uh, opening your um, um, re when rendering uh, any kind of light source uh, Corona is really sensitive to light sources so it's going to create a lot of uh, um, anti-aliasing around it or uh, it's going to uh, try and focus to uh, create this large bloom effect around it so to avoid it I made this light uh, invisible and also I made this uh, uh, bulb uh, mesh um, uh, unrenderable I mean it doesn't cast shadows so it allows the uh, light to uh, freely pass through it also the material setup is really basic I, al I only gave it um, self-illumination the difference between self-illumination and uh, corona light material is that uh, self-illumination doesn't really lit the scene um, in the same way that uh, Corona Light uh, does. So Corona Light uh, takes part in your um, render uh, calculation and it can uh, be used as a light source and self-illumination just means that this uh, material is a little bit brighter or it's going to have those small details that uh, are uh, glowing. So um, I would recommend you use your uh, Corona self-illumination uh, when uh, dealing with this kind of uh, uh, situations okay so basically um, I believe we covered most of it there's no trick to render settings uh, because uh, it's all basic and uh, I believe I was supposed to show you a little bit more about this window uh, yeah that crash really made it hard so okay again uh, we're going to create uh, okay I'm saving the scene just just to make sure okay um, when working with this kind of method you're going to uh, be able to uh, create your uh, any kind well let's say any kind of window so if you use swap copy it uh, I mean just add the swap modifier and you can select use custom selection and pick a sh any kind of shape the trick uh, the real trick here is that uh, you can see that it's uh, automatically going to have two uh, materials uh, in it so I'm going to quickly show you the basic setup of this window and as you can see it's really really uh, easy to set this up okay so I'm going to add this and as you can see it's already uh, distributing these two materials so it's going to allow you for more artistic creations um, or when working with any kind of windows it's going to allow you to uh, put them inside outside or whatever this is the fastest way to approach your windows um, and it's going to work in any case scenario so uh, when I'm going to shape uh, change this shape uh, right here 
the windows will also change. So it's going to allow you to model your windows the fastest way possible. Um, I actually came up with this idea alone, so I hope that you like it. It's really, it's really useful for me and I use it all the time. So um, basically we've set up all this, all this scene um, from scratch and we're going to post a little bit more information on how to uh, approach uh, those, uh, some of those models that you'll uh, have problems uh, uh, creating, uh, let's say, this small plant is uh, actually made using uh, uh, Corona Scatter. So I'm going to post a separate tutorial for you how to uh, approach uh, some kind of bush, hedge or um, whatnot. And uh, basically we can start rendering right now. Oh, this shouldn't be showing. And um, let's go back okay so this is an our environment so as you can see it's not that impressive yet uh, this is our first light uh, this is the light bulb uh, element um, so this is our uh, secondary light that we've put behind our uh, camera uh, you can see this light here because um, you know I tried to um, simulate the camera flash so you've got your extra light and you know I know that this is a, over at the top so let's say this is a um, light plane that you would bring for a not, um, regular session uh, this is our light that we used to lit those small plants to add a little bit details remember uh, don't be afraid to use fake lights at any point of your uh, uh, when creating any kind of scenes because uh, when doing so you're not going to break any kind of rules and you, it's not going to uh, affect any kind of um, workflow that you may have uh, you're going to only um, get more um, effect uh, effects using it so uh, this is basically how you approach a bathroom like this and um, this is how it looks uh, regularly, a regular <laughs> in a regular view, and also when using light mix, this is one uh, one part of 3ds Max that I, uh, I mean, uh, Corona that I really love, because you can basically change the uh, value of your lights in real time. You can uh, change the color, you, so you can basically change the mood in just a second. Uh, right now, I'm turning off the environment or uh, when you want to create some dramatic effect, you can just add some red light and it's going to affect your scene as well. Uh, so let's just do it right now. So as you can see, you've got this uh, weird tone to it, uh, well, this overcast or um, let's say a sunset. So I'm going to decrease this value. And basically guys, um, that'll be it for this uh, a video uh, what I would need to uh, what I would like to show you next is a little bit more uh, about this scene uh, from let's say the back end so I'm going to go quickly through all those uh, light uh, selections so you can see a little bit better how they affect the scene also uh, remember that at this point uh, we're Viz Academy uh, vizacademy.com visit us and uh, choose the English language. We're school with more than uh, one year of experience. We've, uh, um, we've already prepared more than 250 students. Most of them started from zero. And um, what I mean by most is like 55%. So uh, that counts. And also remember that uh, our students uh, basically come to us with uh, really basic knowledge of 3ds max no real um, experience uh, so they have um, a lot of um, let's say interesting motivation some of them want to change their job they want to um, let's say change their current job they want to uh, create their own portfolio they want to 
add a little bit spice to their uh, design. Uh, they want to be able to actually express their self, uh, themselves uh, a little bit more uh, using uh, their uh, own skills. And remember, when, you use, when doing 3D on your own, you're going to save a lot of money uh, because, uh, well, guys like me are expensive. And uh, doing 3D on your own is going to benefit you in uh, many ways. So right now I'm going to leave this scene a little bit uh, for rendering. So if you have some extra questions, please ask them now. I can um, uh, inspect all the models for you. And also I've noticed that this mirror is um, in a wall. So I'm going to move, this, uh, move it a little bit, um, just a little bit further. Okay, so uh, guys, um, Keep uh, asking those questions. We've got uh, a little bit more time for you. And uh, if you want to ask any kind of question about our school, about our um, how to approach any kind of design, maybe you already work in 3ds Max and you would like to know how to actually approach some kind of problems. Earlier on, uh, one of you asked how to actually align a camera uh, when you already have, uh, let's say, a view set up. So I've got this view um, set uh, here. So if you want to uh, approach it, you uh, may, if you want to approach, um, align two cameras, you can select uh, one of those cameras, let's say this camera. Uh, let me uh, create uh, one more so you can see it a little bit better what I'm talking about. So um, I want to align those two cameras because well, let's say you've switched from uh, from one rendering engine to another and you want to quickly uh, do it. So all you need to do is select this camera. This is the, one of the easiest methods. So select this camera. Um, I, I mean the one you're going to actually try to align. Now go to perspective and quickly press Control plus uh, plus C. So it's going to create this, uh, it's going to move that camera to exact point where uh, the, sec uh, the first one was. Also, you need to remember that some of those cameras like mine will be scaled or uh, tilted in uh, some weird way. So you can, uh, so you need to uh, keep that in mind that it's, it can be a uh, factor in it when uh, dealing with this kind of uh, elements. So um, guys, we're going to share this scene with you. All these models that you can see are uh, made by Viz Academy. Uh, we can share all of those uh, materials and, uh, and uh, textures are, are also handmade. So you can uh, use them freely at any time. But we're going to, cr to ask you for a favor. Please um, visit our Facebook page. There we're going to create a new uh, webinar um, in event. So if you invite 20 of your uh, friends and email us with, uh, with proof that you've uh, invited 20 guys to our uh, next stream, we're going to send you all this uh, scene that I've created with you and also some extra um, introduction videos that would help you uh, to start uh, your journey with 3ds Max. Um, also, when working with 3ds Max, we're going to um, start our new class uh, in just uh, uh, three weeks. Uh, it's going to start on 30th of March. We've got a uh, few uh, seats open, uh, just a few left, I mean. And at this point, we're just trying to uh, get uh, you to know our uh, school, know our class, uh, how the methods we teach in. And also, we're going to grant you uh, one week free trial for those that actually, um, from uh, this day now on, uh, are going to attend all our webinars and are going to share uh, our invitations as we ask uh, at each stream. We're going to give you a uh, one week trial and also we can uh, work some uh, disc discount deals with you. If you're going to be active, we're going to reward you. We're really, um, uh, we're really um, hoping that you'll uh, understand that at this moment we're trying to uh, help you uh, 
with this free webinars and we're going to um, well send you all the scenes all those uh, models where you can actually um, use it in any way you like so uh, guys do you have any extra questions uh, you can ask us on our email it's visacademy.uk um, at um, gmail.com um, if you add uh, the title mic questions I'm going to answer them right away and um, well for next few hours so also we can have a call whatever uh, so uh, guys this is basically our scene uh, rendered after a while so as I said uh, light mix is a really amazing tool that allows you for um, a lot of artic uh, artistic expression um, so you can change the mood of your scene at any time you like um, also you can um, basically control each element of your scene um, so guys um, I'm going to now uh, log off to our uh, let's say bye bye screen <laughs> and uh, guys I hope that you liked our uh, stream uh, please ask your questions and um, guys we'll see you in next week